Hey, I'm your host, Sean Saxon, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Create Stuff Podcast. This was streamed live at twitch.tv slash Sean Saxon. Come join my Discord server in the description to figure out when I'm going live so you can join the chat. If you're there, you can ask questions you want me to ask the guest. I love taking viewer questions, so please do that. I also want to say, I'm very sorry for the clicking noise. I had some problems with my setup, and I did not know that was coming through. Moving to college has made things difficult. This will not be a problem next time. Last thing, a few times on the podcast, I mentioned my next guest, Public Spam Account, and I say I'm interviewing them on Saturday at 6 p.m. EST. This is false. It is Friday at 6 p.m. EST. I'm a dumbass. Please forgive me. Also, by the time you are watching this, I regret to say that the interview has already ended, but the episode will soon be going up. Sorry for the long intro. Enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the sixth episode of the Create Stuff Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Saxon, and today's guest is Moderately Mediocre. Hey, y'all. It's Ian. Just kidding. Hi, it's me, Marley oh, Mediocre. Okay. I thought you were correcting me, like I, as if I had said <laughs> Ian already, like we did the other time, and um, I had to start the recording don't over. <laughs> don't worry, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit we have. Uh, Ian has opinions, we always say, hey y'all, it's Ian. It's Scott the, the funniest Wallace thing Club? in the world. Right. Yeah, it's, it's the funniest thing in the world that Ian is Southern. <laughs> Wait, Ian's Southern? I didn't know yeah, this. Yeah, Ian Southern. We're not interviewing him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the this wrong is the podcast. Ian Has Opinions follow-up podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually want to hear the interview with Ian Has Opinions, though, check it out. Uh, wow, I'm already shilling in the first, like, few minutes. Let's yeah. go. And the uh, little eye card in the in the top right, you can find the Ian Has Opinions podcast. No. <laughs> no, you episode. can't. I'm not putting it Same there. Podcast. I don't know how to do Aww. that. <laughs> <laughs> look okay well maybe i'll figure it out now maybe i will maybe it's there maybe it's not go check and tell me in the comments if it's there or not uh anyways let's get started moderately mediocre i will be referring to you as medio throughout the podcast as it is correctly uh, pronounced just to save a little bit of time what do you do um well breathe primarily uh mm-hmm. good place to start to sleep yeah Sometimes I, oh, oh, you want to know about the YouTube. Uh, so I do YouTube. I make, uh, Dream SMP original songs and I make, uh, eh, you know, good enough animatics to go with them. They're really here to, they're really there to convey the lyrics. Um, but yeah, my main thing is uh, the music. I am a music boy. I also do, um, I mentioned earlier, like, you know, 30 seconds ago, that it is mostly Dream SMP music, uh, because it's always good to make music off of a demographic. Mm-hmm, yeah, you're appealing to a very wide audience there. But, uh, mm-hmm. I gotta be honest with you, YouTube stuff, that's cool, but I really want to ask you more about this whole breathing thing. Like, what's up with that? Yeah, okay, so imagine this, all right? Imagine you have been alive. I know, crazy. Imagine you've been yeah, alive okay, your, okay. Your, your whole life. <laughs> that's a fun oxymoron. Imagine you've been alive your whole life, right? And instead of just using your nose for for smelling things, you know, as you do, Mm -hmm. you actually inhaled when there's nothing to smell. Really? Yeah. Dang, that's insane. And why do you do that? Uh, the money, primarily. (laughs) The- what? (laughs) (laughs) The the, uh, the money. The money? Primarily, yeah. For- uh, anyways. (laughs) This this dumb bit. All right. (laughs) So, okay, can you tell me a little bit more about your original music? Uh, of course, of course, of course, of course. So, yeah, it's, uh, well, in my opinion, they're all bangers. Uh, every single song is a banger. Uh, because I make music that I want to listen to, I guess. Like, it's, um, because of YouTube, you you kind of have the privilege of, uh, making, to, or to a degree making content that isn't uh influenced by people so it's not influenced like a record label it's not influenced by a like a producer or 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 whatever so Mm -hmm. i i i can really make music that uh i think sounds good and that i think is interesting and lyrics i think sound good so it's uh so it's a lot easier for it to kind of fall into music i enjoy listening to okay that's nice Mm-hmm. Is this, uh, is the Dream SMP what got you into creating music, or have you been doing this for a bit even before you started your YouTube channel? Oh yeah, I've been making music for a while. Um, I have this kind of, I have this idea, it's it's like a saying, and I don't know if I made it up, but I think I did? So if I didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have this, um, 
this uh, this saying that you have to make 20 bad songs before you make a good song. Uh, and it's and I and I know that people are reluctant to describe their work as bad as they should. You know, I I I think that not a lot of uh, work is unequivocally bad, but like to your own personal standards, um, I would say like you need to <laughs> make work that is subpar before you make work you're proud of, and that's just a fact. So I. Like I did, I made those 20 bad songs, uh, and it took me like three years to do those 20 bad songs, and then, uh, Election Day was that 21st song, baby. Yeah, so um, when are you actually releasing the one good song? Uh, sorry? <laughs> never, never mind, I'm sorry, that was a joke. <laughs> No, I wanted. I want to be. I want to be a part of the bit. Explain it. Oh, okay. I, I so play in the space. No, I got you, bro. Who so I'm like, okay. So you're saying you need to make twenty bad songs, right? Uh, before you make one good song. So I'm like, oh, when are you uploading the good song then? Oh, nice. It's. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm terrible. This is what a horrible intro. <laughs> okay, no, you're but you're good. You're good. That's actually a really cool saying, though, and I think that applies to a lot of different forms of art, like. Yeah. You gotta get started in everything before you can master it. My band director mm -hmm. used to say that you have to be able to do something seven times perfectly before you can before you really have it down. Which is yeah, I guess that, that makes sense. Uh, although I think that I think it's interesting the use of the word perfect because uh, um, a lot of like okay, <laughs> so those that twenty first song it's not gonna be your best song ever, obviously. And it's probably not going to be, like, like the 20 songs after that are probably not going to be anywhere close to perfect either. But, uh, if, I don't know, if you don't, like, upload it, then you're never going to get to the point where you could maybe call your work perfect or have someone say, oh, this is perfect. You know? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I feel like, especially with music, people get discouraged very easily because there's a lot less kind of out there that's like here's how you make music as a beginner um and there's a lot of that for like uh um visual art so mm -hmm. i i think that a lot of people find it's easier to get into visual art sometimes but um not to say that it's harder or easier or whatever it's completely uh subjective but um i think that sometimes it is uh harder in terms of uh keeping up that motivation to make good music. Mm-hmm. Right, like, a lot of pieces and parts have to go into a song. It's kind of hard mm -hmm. to sit down and, like, just start recording one rather than sitting down and starting to draw. Yeah. Not, it's, not all, of yeah, course, it's, not to say that a... one is objectively harder than the other or anything like that. Yeah, no, we're covering all our bases. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So, what inspired you to... Uh, make election day. Oh, uh, I actually have an answer to this one. Beetlebug's Ode to a Man Bird. Um, it's, uh, which is, if you don't know, you probably do, but if you don't know, that is another, uh, creator on YouTube, and, uh, they made the song Ode to a Man Bird, which is the first song I at least heard that was a fan song based on the Dream SMP. And, funny enough, I didn't actually realize that you could, like, make fan songs the way you make fan art until I heard it. I like I like I didn't realize that that was a thing you could do. Like it just never it just never occurred to me. So mm -hmm. listening to Ode to the Manberg, I was like, oh we, oh we can do this? This is a thing we're allowed to do? And I was like, oh I'm gonna do this then. <laughs> that, yeah actually I get that. Like that's not the first thing you think of when you think of fan content. Like fan yeah. fiction and fan art are like both so like they're everywhere. Every fandom has a ton of that, but fan music is a little bit more rare, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, I mean, rare enough to the point where I'd never seen or heard any up until that point. Mm hmm. You yeah. know, except for maybe like Undertale, where the soundtrack was a big uh, draw of the game. That's true, but Dream SP doesn't really have anything like a, like a soundtrack. The closest thing it mm -hmm. has is, is like, um,. Oh, you know, the one, like, parody of Hallelujah that they did, My Le Man Yeah. Bird. I don't yeah. know why I couldn't think of the name of that. Very important Which thing. Which actually, uh, actually, for the musical, I actually rewrote that. Uh, I, I, I redid a melody for it so we didn't have to use Hallelujah. Really? 
Yeah. I, uh, I did a, I, I was in the shower and I was like, oh, fuck, we're gonna get copyright claimed. Uh, so, I, um, <laughs> I was like, Ian, I made a, I made a version of, of, of Milo Manberg. I, I, do you, can we, hey, hey, Ian, can we, you, can, hey, Ian? And he was like, yes, it's, yeah, we can use it. Shut up. He didn't say that. He's actually wonderful. <laughs> um, <laughs> just besmirching the name of ian has opinions um, what does ian has a op- has opinions yeah. really like behind the screen well one time he 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 slapped me in the face and said that i was a dumb little fool all over the internet somehow all over the internet like yeah. very impressive actually that he even managed to do that and all just to hurt me his arms are so long dude he reached so far all the way up to canada <laughs> Okay, so for anybody who might not have the context, can you tell us more about the musical you just mentioned? In case they haven't watched the fifth episode of the podcast and they're not real fans. I'm just joking. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm disinclined to explain it since if you're not a fake fan, you'll know. But uh... (laughs) (laughs) But, okay, so La Manberg the Musical, or as we affectionately shorten it to, La Musical, um is a uh, musical based on the happenings of the Dream SMP. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, I mean, we, we're familiar with the Dream SMP, yes? Uh, so it's that, except we took out all the bad parts and we wrote songs instead. Yeah, it's really, really cool. If you want to hear more about it, you should definitely go check out the fifth episode of the podcast after this one. Though we will be talking yeah. about it a bit here, too, especially me- um, Medio's role in it. I almost said Medio again. I, I, I heard it. You're good, though. You're catching yourself. It's, I, it's, it's great. It's character development. <laughs> character development. Let's go. So can you describe very quickly what the Dream SMP actually is? I know we've had at yeah. this point, like... Oh, uh, I guess you would be the third person on the podcast who specifically makes content focused on the Dream SMP, but, Mm -hmm. you know, just in case people have, for some reason, haven't seen those episodes, and also it's kind of funny to hear how other people describe it. Go. Uh, so I think the Dream SMP is D&D, but the people playing it think that they're too cool to play (laughs) D&D. Um, (laughs) that's, that's basically what it is. Um, it's a bunch of... Bunch of bunch of guys streaming on Twitch, role playing in a Minecraft world, which is, if you think about it, D and D with Minecraft. That is like that is a uh, the most unique description of the of the Dream SMP I think I have ever heard, and also an extremely accurate one. Hmm. So what yeah, about? Know, hell yeah. So would you say like I noticed that the first on your um, on your YouTube channel, the first song you wrote about the Dream SMP was Election Day. Yeah, you mentioned us. So what inspired mm-hmm. you to write Election Day, and what is that about, as far as, well, events in the Dream SMP go? Yeah, okay. So, um, I was for the Dream SMP. Uh, so Election Day is about uh, the Lomanberg election, where uh, Flat and Quackity pull their votes, and they win... And this is kind of the direct aftermath. It, it, I know it's not entirely clear with the lyrics, but at least what I had in my mind is like it kind of covers um, just uh, like uh, the Laman boys, as I refer to them, which is just Wilbur and Tommy and Pubbo and the extras. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the, um, extras. Oh. the extras. Oh, ow. <laughs> uh, sorry, Fundy, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, which is. They lost, and, uh, you know, they're fleeing the country, and Schlatt's an asshole, and uh, (laughs) Techno's here, whoa! I'm I'm not selling it very well, but it basically covers the events of, the the events in the aftermath of the Lomanberg election. Okay, so, in Election Day, if I'm remembering correctly, I might be mixing this up with another song, I believe you kind of had different voices for different characters that were singing, is that correct? Like, like different points of view and stuff? Uh, maybe I am remembering the wrong song. Oh, you know what? I think I'm actually thinking of Lads on Tour. Shit, I'm, wow, I'm good oh, at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lads on Tour, baby. Okay, never mind. We'll uh... come back to that later. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, this is, uh, this is, I'm very professional. 
Well, you know, it could it it, it kind of does make sense. Um, election day does focus from multiple points of view, uh, as well. Um, mm-hmm. there's it, it it mostly speaks from a kind of like narrator point of view. Um, even still saying like our anthem, our country, but it kind of like like a like an ensemble point of view, I suppose. But then there is definitely a bit where it is Schlatt singing or or the Schlatt point of view. So you know, it still applies. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. And do you have like a different tone or voice that you use for different characters and points of view that appear in the songs? Um, not generally. I I think that I try to do that uh, earlier on in the song, like in the music stage, uh, or or rather in the in the structure stage, where I instead of like changing my voice, I try to change it rhythmically, or I try to change the instrumental in the background, or I try to use motifs, or I try to um like just write the piece of music higher or lower so that I don't have to affect my voice. It just kind of you get the feeling that uh things are changing or there's a different person singing without having to, you know, put on a funny voice or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's um I actually I think it's funny you brought that up because I did consider uh doing different voices for different characters in the beginning. And I there there exists a cut somewhere. There exists a cut of um white flags, actually, where I tried to kind of affect my voice to be like, you know, Dream and Sapnap and George. Um, and it just sounded bad. It just didn't sound good. It sounded like mm. disingenuous. It kind of sounded fake. And uh, so I, I rewrote it a little bit so that it uh, allowed for there to be musical distinction instead of vocal distinction. Okay, interesting. So, Election Day, that ended up getting 280,000 views, which, if I understand correctly, is uh, kind of a lot, especially for a channel that only has a few other videos posted before it. Yeah, dude, it was, it was, oh my god. I, (laughs) I want you to know that at the time of posting Election Day, I think I had 39 subscribers. (laughs) Um, so the amount of growth, I I think I'm sitting at like 8,300 now, which is fucking insane, first off. That's crazy. Uh Um, but like, so at the time... I really did not expect it to go anywhere, Election Day. Like, I hoped it would, and I hoped maybe some kind soul pitying the, 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 uh, oh, what, what, what is the, I don't know, the poor. The small I, creators. I, yeah. I thought, I was trying to think of a funny word for the poor, but, you know, couldn't think of one. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, I kind of hoped someone would, like, media share it or, 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 you know, notice it somehow. Uh, and then it it did, I guess, get noticed, not by content creators, but by a lot of people. Well, that's a lie. Tubbo did react to the first bit of it on a media share stream, which was pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So how did you feel when you saw that number slowly rise up? And was it like a gradual climb or did it kind of like one day just like burst up? Uh, election day was a more gradual climb. The, the Drista thing was a, was a, was a dramatic rise up. Mm-hmm. Speaking it of which... A... Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so, on your channel, you have both original songs and uh, some animatics. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And also, like, uh... what an animatic is and what's different about it from an animation? Sure. So, an animatic is an animation for lazy people. Uh, that's a joke. <laughs> uh, an animatic is an animation, except it's... Uh, it relies more on its keyframes uh, and less fluid motion so you still get the story you still understand what's going on it's just it just it's basically the same product but it takes less time and i uh as some this is this one isn't a joke i am very lazy so it's so for me it is animation for lazy people uh so i I do uh, animatics as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I do animatics for lyric videos or I guess music videos, but they always have the lyrics in there. Um, and then I also do just kind of normal animatics if I, if, if, if the wind blows that way. So I, uh, I have actually a solid amount of uh, the Adventure Zone 
animatics on there. And by solid, I think it's like, like, uh, no, it's one and in, and uh, uh, a lyric cover of a song. But um, I, I I know the one that uh, that most people will think of if they think of animatics from Moderately Mediocre, and that is uh, the Dream and Drista siblings animatic uh, featuring the song Siblings from Brian David Gilbert. Aha, uh-huh. and that animatic has 1.9 million views. Yeah. That is that is an insane number. So you say that was a like a sudden, like yeah. skyrocket in popularity. That was that one was I again like thirty nine subscribers. Um, and then it's like, uh, hey, g- hey guys, this is at a hundred thousand views. What's happening? Is I was I I had no idea what was going on. Uh, and I'm thankful and 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 amazed that it has that many views. I also think, without a doubt, that it is my worst video. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's ugh, looking looking back on it, like like rewatching it. It's not very good compared oh. to my other content. Um, and I, you know, I mean, I mean, we, we all wish that we could go back in time and do things better with the knowledge we have now. But uh, I, oh, I, like, I am. I am still in awe, and I am so, so incredibly thankful that uh, it has reached the audience it has. And I and I attribute a lot of the growth in my channel to it. Um, it is, though, without a doubt, my worst video. Without a doubt, really? Yeah. So what about it is worse than your other stuff, would you say? Well, I mean, there's uh, there's always the, like technical stuff of like early work and it's you know unpolished and 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 you don't know all the stuff you knew before but also i just don't think that it conveys the same personality as my other videos do i think that it uh i i think it just is uh a little bit of a misrepresentation of what i do and who i am Mm -hmm. and uh I, you know, and, and, and also it's, you know, the, you know, I look at it and I'm like, oh, the line art in that is whatever, or the, or the timing or the, the editing, you know, all that stuff. But also I just, uh, yeah, I think that it kind of is maybe not the best representation of who I am. Mm-hmm. Seems like that happens a lot nowadays. People like, just like, um, creators content will suddenly skyrocket, even if it's not what they're most proud of on their channel. Yeah, well, I I see it as a great opportunity, though. It's, uh, I think that it's good for getting that audience so that I have a a, a better percentage, or uh, rather, a better chance of finding people who do like my content for what it is. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And it also gives people an opportunity to uh, see your content get better over time, which I think is super satisfying to watch. I, I agree. While we were talking about the interview before we actually started, you mentioned that you more you're more focused on your original music rather than your animatics. Yes. So why is that? Uh, because I'm better at music than animatics, <laughs> basically. And and I and I think it's more interesting. I if if someone was like, oh, what do you do? Describe yourself in a word that is not YouTuber. I guess I would say like musician or or or, or like uh, singer musician. I. I, I guess it's more, uh, I, I think that the best way to describe it is that the the visual and uh, art that I do is always in service of the music that is with it. Like, I mm-hmm. don't quote me on this because I don't know for sure, but I think that there is, like, I think that there isn't any content on my channel that doesn't have anything to do with music i think that uh all of my videos either are an uh animatic to music either i've made it or someone else made it or it's uh you know what there's only one video that isn't that and i wish more people could see it (laughs) wait sorry i lied i lied are you there talking about video. drinking milk but also i become unhappy yes i am talking about drinking milk but also i become unhappy <laughs> i have one video on my channel that isn't music related or art related at all 
and it's a <laughs> shitty drinking game, but instead of alcohol, it's milk. And I'm sitting in the, uh, I'm sitting in a hallway of, like, an empty community center with some of my friends, and we found some just disgusting milk in a vending machine, and we bought it, and then played a game with it, with a d20, to see who would have to drink the milk, and I lost, so I had to drink the milk. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's an artistic genius right there. What an incredible video. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't watched that one, go watch that one. That's my, <laughs> that's my fucking magnum opus. <laughs> and for everybody watching, uh, after this has already been uploaded, uh, everything that is mentioned in this, every single song, every single video, will be in the description. Both the ones that are on Medi Moderately Mediocre's channel and ones that aren't. Like uh, that one you mentioned earlier, Ode to Lamanberg, will be in the description in case you guys mm. haven't heard it. I think... Uh, I don't think I've actually heard it, surprisingly enough. <laughs> I'm gonna start mentioning more songs. Okay, wait, no, don't, don't, don't do this to me. Yeah, I know. Don't I know. be. <laughs> don't abuse actually, your power. I have a playlist of my Dream S and P songs, so we can link that. I actually could link that. That'd be pretty cool. I'd love to. Uh, I'd actually love to link that, so some pe some people who are watching can go check out some uh, more cool stuff from the community. Hell yeah! So one of the first things you made was the Don't Matter Dream Team Minecraft Manhunt animatic. Yeah. So what inspired that? Because that's the only thing uh, on your channel, besides the Adventure Zone ones, that don't relate directly to the Dream SMP itself. Uh, yeah. The, yes, you are correct. Or, well... No, I'm not. There's... Jubilation Station is also there. Yeah. Which is something and I also, also want to ask about later. And also, uh, Minecraft Streamer, which exists twice. Um, but, uh, yes. So... Oh, this start twice. Yeah, because one of them is the early version played live, and the other one is, uh... Oh, thanks, Daisy. Daisy's watching the milk video. Um, one <laughs> of them is played live, and one of them is, like, a retouching I did later. But, uh, yeah, so... Okay, this is funny. So the song, uh, Don't Matter, I got recommended to me by an Instagram-sponsored post. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this slaps. I love it. And, um, and then I was listening to it, and I was like, huh, <laughs> they talk about, uh, falling and overcoming obstacles, and they also say the word dream at one point. I'm gonna make an animatic about this. <laughs> uh, there was not a lot of thought put behind that one. It's, like, like, compared to my later content, there was, like, it was just, like, nothing. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna draw pictures. <laughs> um... But Tarek Fine actually watched it. The 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 <laughs> guy that made the video, he's because this was posted on my Instagram before my my YouTube, uh, and he saw it and he was like, "Hey, this is great." I was like, "Ah, you made this song." Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, have any other like uh big big names or any other uh, Dream SMP creators like seen your music on stream or anything similar to that? Uh, yeah, so there's, I can think of four instances, um, two of them mine, two of them the musical. So, uh, like I said, Tubbo reacted to the first bit of Election Day on stream, uh, via Media Share, and then Ranboo actually got Media Shared, uh, a good portion of Lads on Tour as well. Uh-huh. Uh, so I know that they've heard that, um, and then, uh, Captain Puffy reacted or again i keep saying reacted as media share but i guess she did react to it um to the trailer for uh for the lambert musical and then she subbed to the channel which i think is cool and then uh Eret also uh saw the trailer through media share so that's in total uh two two of mine and then and then two of the two of the projects okay that's pretty cool have you, how long have you been doing music like as far as your entire life goes how did you get started in music um, uh, probably, uh, actually, okay, I think that the first, uh, time that I remember doing music is in seventh grade, where I was sitting around the, you know, I mean, in my seventh grade classroom, we didn't have individual desks, we had big tables, we all sat around. So, um, I remember sitting around my big table with my friends, 
and uh, making each of them uh, do a different beat on the table to uh, kind of like create one uh, one great big rhythm. And then uh, I sang some lyrics to a song that I had, th- that I had made. Uh, so was that like your first time actually doing something like, is that how you got started in music? I just like wrote like little songs every so often. I, I would record me singing them or I would just write them down and remember how they went. Um, but as as far as the first time I ever actually did anything music related outside of walking around my room singing into a phone that would probably be it oh uh-huh, okay i see what you're saying however you would say like walking around your uh room talking into your phone that was how you got started making music yeah i guess it's uh i i, I was always that uh that fucking uh weird ass kid who would like think of some lyrics and I go, oh shit, I gotta gotta record that so I don't forget it. And then I'd spend like a minute hunched in the, like in a separate room, hunched over in the corner, like, like whispering the song idea into my phone. (laughs) Yeah, it's more acceptable though, because I was like 12. Uh I gotta be honest, if I, (laughs) that's actually pretty, a pretty funny mental image, but that's, that's a, that's a neat way to remember stuff. So you prefer like audio notes over just physically writing down lyrics? Yeah, because I, I I have trouble remembering my uh, my melodies when I come up with them, so I like it's it's always a mad scramble. I'm like, oh god, oh, I gotta record this before I forget it. <laughs> okay, so uh, throughout your life, like, what other musical related th- like music related things have you done? Like, have you played in instruments or like been in any bands or anything like that? Hmm. Uh, so I used to play the clarinet, and then I learned the flute, and then I tried to learn guitar and I failed, and I play piano primarily now. When I make my music, that's kind of the crux of how I start off, with, like, piano and voice. Um, Mm -hmm. never been in a band, though. You want to start a band, Sean? Uh, I... I uh, have very little musical talent except for specifically mallet keyboard instruments. And those generally don't go good together, go good with very small bands. However, if you're willing to help me buy an instrument that would cost me thousands of dollars, I'm more than happy to start a band. I think we can work. I think we can work with what you got. (laughs) Sounds sounds like a sounds like a solid solid starting point. What's our band name? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Yeah. How about Medio? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I feel like I should explain yeah, this now. Like, um, or... <laughs> if you're watching this in post, you don't get the, you don't get the, you, you wouldn't get the joke. Because when I started this stream, I called Medio, Medio, uh, right after I had finished discussing with them how dumb it is to call them Medio instead of Medio. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a, it was a wonderful dramatic irony point. We could call it Madio, because Sean, there we go, we found it. Oh, perfect, perfect. Uh, Everybody watching this at home, watch out for that band. It'll happen eventually, just like the uh, numerous other projects I've started and never finished. Go check out our SoundCloud. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Uh, Look up soundcloud.com slash uh, Madio. It's uh, it's, uh, Madio on Bandcamp. (laughs) Yeah, look up Madio on Bandcamp. It's spelled a little bit weird, so you might have to scroll for a bit, but but you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. So how do you get inspiration for your music? Uh... Well, to quote or to paraphrase a very lovely man who I uh, stole his music for my 1.9 mil video, uh, <laughs> they come to me like prophet, like prophecies from an angry god. Uh, I, it's, it literally is. Um, I will be going about my normal day, being a normal person, and then my brain will whack me over the head with uh, a song idea. And then I record it, and then it sits there for two months or so, and then I go, "Huh, I should make a song." And then I, and then I like just look through my fucking archives of half baked ideas, and uh, I pick one, and then I build a song off of it. Okay, and from there, what is the process of building a song like for you? Um, well, 
I actually have an answer to this that is somewhat satisfying. So obviously there's variations on this, but the like, a lot of people ask me like, how do I make a song? How do you start making a song? And a lot of people are like, do you want to start with the lyrics? What if you have a melodic idea? You can build up some structure, which doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> so here is a play-by-play -play of what I do. I uh, record a live version of the song first on my uh, on my keyboard. Um, and I have a MIDI keyboard and an actual keyboard that isn't a MIDI keyboard. Uh, so I use the I use the other one because it. As it, it's from like the it's from like the nineties and it plays a bunch of fun sounds. It's my favorite. Um, so I do that and I pick some chords and I just uh, like I I play the bit I know that I want to start off with and then I sit there and I fucking think about what the next bit is gonna be and then I write that down in my little lyric thing and then I press play on my recording again and I record that and I get like a schlepped together. Frankenstein of a song uh, and then I take that and then I uh, pick a um, I pick a tempo I, I usually rest around like 110, 120 BPM because I like, I like uh, faster songs and then I record the lyrics with no backing track with just the click track in the background into uh, my program and then I uh, add, in this order, uh, drums, chords, um, like a like a kind of top melody to it, and then a different kind for the bridge. And then that, what you've got there, is a song. That's a finished song. I don't stop there, usually, because I... Uh, I, I, I like to add things, I like to add little sections, add different things, but, like, for basic song stuff, that's kind of all you need. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Ian Danley earlier saying, stop being a sarcastic asshole and just answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking out for you. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that, but I didn't want to say it. I'm just joking. Uh <laughs> yeah, no. Many people think that about me often. You wouldn't be the first. So what other creators have inspired you and in your style of music? Ooh, okay. So, um, I love this question. Uh, I am very partial to the sound of uh, Marina, or like Marina and the Diamonds, but it's just one person, so I always get confused. So uh, Marina and the Diamonds, I guess, and uh, Glass Animals. Whom I liked before Heat Waves, if y'all want to get at me about this. <laughs> um, and uh, Jack Stauber. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Good choices. And the Jack Stauber doesn't come through as often as I as I hope that it could, but, uh, you know, we're working on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Interesting. So, uh, I should have asked this before I asked the last question, but what programs do you use to make your music? Right. So I am, uh, sadly, uh, I'm a GarageBand user. It is, uh, I, it is, it, I'm, I'm learning Reaper right now. Um, but I started off using GarageBand when I wasn't so good. And, uh, I still use it because it's the interface that I know. But yeah, um, for now, it is, uh, it is GarageBand. Okay, do you use anything else besides GarageBand to make your music, or is it just that one app? Um, in terms of software, yeah, I think it is just that, but I, uh, I use my, my, uh, my keyboard, uh, my, my physical real person keyboard to, to figure out melodies and stuff. Okay, yeah, so tell us a little bit more about your hardware then. Hmm, uh, it is a very old uh keyboard that i got from my dad uh a while back because i was like i want to i want to make music and i i i need a i need a piano and a keyboard and he was like i've got one um which is why it is uh so old it's from from a solid while ago i said the 90s it's before that oh geez. i think that i think um so yeah it's 
like it's got a bunch of fun presets and shit but basically i i i just take it out whenever i'm whenever i'm looking to looking to create some music and uh i just like it's the equivalent of not knowing what to write so you write every word on the page until you like one basically mm -hmm. okay interesting and uh what kind of microphone do you use uh i use a zoom h1 microphone which is a terrible microphone don't buy it <laughs> hey if anyone's looking for mic recommendations don't get my microphone get a get a uh get a, get a blue yeti microphone if you're if you're looking to splurge don't get it don't get mine uh, it's technically, it's technically a, it doubles as a handheld recorder, but it uh, also functions as a USB mic, so I, I, I use it that way. Okay, okay. So, speaking of recommendations for other people, what would you, uh, what tips and tricks do you have for people who are also looking to make their own original music? Well, damn, I, I, I think I already kind of broke down the, the media formula, uh, earlier, but, uh, I would also say... Um, I didn't talk about lyrics, so I'd say in terms of lyrics, start off by writing a poem. Uh, because poem is just music without music. Uh, a song without music. That's what a poem is, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're looking to, to, to dip your feet into some, some lyrics, uh, write a poem first. And then mess with rhythm, mess with, uh, uh, mess with diction, and finagle your way into a song from those lyrics or from the from that poem rather okay okay that's an interesting method so is there anything you wish you had known when you started making music yourself that you uh, would like to tell other creators you know, there's a lot of specific stuff but i'd say for the most part don't be afraid to reach out to people like if you don't know something someone else definitely knows it so if you don't know what plugins are good, or if you don't know how to do reverb, or you don't know what is the correct amount of noise suppression, like you can learn that from from YouTube and you can learn that online, but I find personally that the best way to like get that info is to speak to someone who knows way more about it than you do. Okay, okay. Interesting. Is that how you figured stuff out too? Yeah, it is. It is. Um because I've okay, I've noticed this um and that, and it might just be like within the musical, but I think it it's a little bit more widespread. Um I think that musicians are way more inclined to tell their fellow musicians when something they've made is bad than artists are to tell other artists. Mm -hmm. Um and that's like visual art. So I, like there's a there's a big culture uh, of of not saying that someone's drawing is bad or that someone's like like trying not to offend people who who you think don't draw as well or whatever, um, which I've never done because I don't know what the right way to do it is anyway. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, you know, and it's a lot of like, oh, I see where you're going with this, but you could maybe tweak these things and maybe. Uh, do this. I thought I found that that was helpful when I was learning. And then musicians will be like, "This section sounds weird. You should fix it. Here's how you fix it. Go fix it." And it's like, "All right, I'll go fix it." <laughs> but it's, it, 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 there's a lot less beating around the bush. So I find it's like if someone's like, "Uh, yeah, what can? I, here's my song. What do you guys think?" That's that's the that's the gateway. What do you think? What do you think about it? It's like, oh, well, here is exactly all the parts, how it is bad, and uh, here's how you fix it. And then you can go fix it. Okay, okay. So it's really important for people to be open to criticism and put their stuff out there so that it can be criticized. I believe so. I think that there is value in um, learning on your own and learning how to uh, make better stuff on your own, but I think that it is very important. Uh, to be open to criticism and feedback and hearing people that you can actually talk to say it first so that it's not the internet at large telling you. <laughs> okay, okay. So, what are your plans for the future of your music? Are you going to continue making uh, Dream SMP-focused stuff for a while? Do you want to join a band at some point? Are you planning on keeping the YouTube thing going for a long time? Uh, what, what are your plans? 
Well, I mean, as we know, we're starting a band, so there's that. Um, <laughs> yes, of course. But I'm probably going to move away from the Dream SMP because I, like, I, I first got into it because I, I liked a lot of the early stuff because it did remind me of the Adventure Zone a little bit because uh, it had all those, like, serious moments and then also the goofs kind of intertwined in it. Um, and I enjoy that kind of content a lot uh, where it, like, has that sense of levity to it. But it's kind of moving away from that, which is fine. You know, if if they want to be more serious with it, that's totally their prerogative. It's just not my jam so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, So probably going to move away from the Dream SMP. I don't intend to stop making music, though. Uh, And also, (laughs) I'm not moving away from the Dream SMP anytime soon. It's like... There's uh there's of course the musical, which is all based on the early stuff that I that I enjoy. And uh there are moments, there are moments in the more recent streams where it's uh where where it has uh plot points and interactions and moments that I like. So don't worry okay. if you if you're if you're if you're vibing with me just because you like my dream SMP music, it's not ending anytime soon. But in terms of uh, um, a big picture trend, it's probably gonna not be Dream SMP forever. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. What like uh, events that have happened so far, or do you still want to cover in your music? Uh, okay, so I, uh, fair warning, haven't been watching the streams uh, as of late, but uh, from what I know, um, I really okay. I'm a huge fan of Charlie Slimesicle. Just in general, you, way before he joined the Dream SMP, he was my favorite. My favorite dude. He's great. I love him, and uh, he plays D and D and DMs. So I think he knows uh, what's up story wise and how to do <laughs> good character and good story. So I am inclined to do something uh, uh, with his character. I'm just waiting for like a really good moment, I guess. And he's had a, he's had a, he's had quite a few of them, but like I guess I'm waiting for like a big moment. Um and I'm also a fan of uh the stuff that Techno does. I think Techno also in like understands um plot and character and uh so a lot of the stuff Techno does is also very much on the plate. Okay, okay. Very interesting. I'm really excited to see that. I have yeah. exactly the same uh, op- opinion of Charlie Simsicle, so I'm oh, definitely yes. very excited for that. Oh, hell man of taste! <laughs> All of his content is what I've been watching the most as far as Dream SMP stuff goes lately. Like, uh, it's so good. It's just, it's so good. It's so funny, yeah. and it still shows, like, the the story in such a funny perspective. Mm-hmm. It, it has more of that levity, more of that... Ugh, fuck i just i keep comparing everything to the adventure zone but like it 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 has more of that vibe so let me ask because i have i've never actually heard of it what is the adventure zone oh hell yeah so the adventure zone is an actual play podcast uh from the mcelroy brothers who mm-hmm. uh if you don't know they do a lot of podcasts they do my brother my brother and me which is a comedy advice podcast they had like a tv show for a bit and they're generally, like, hailed as, like, very, very cool dudes on the internet. And they're funny, in my opinion. I think they're very funny. So the Adventure Zone is, um, it's mostly a and d podcast. It's a and d podcast where it's these three brothers and their dad. And they play D&D. And, uh, it's, like, surprisingly really fucking good. <laughs> it, they... It starts off uh, with, like, pure goofs and uh, and jokes, which is great, because I love to laugh at stuff. Uh, like, media, in my opinion, should be funny. Like, I think that funny media is, like, that's my preferred uh, way to consume media. Um, and then, like, I mean, not to, like, not to quote a popular text post, but it's like, ah... Uh... I'll find this text post and I'll send it to you so you can put it on screen when when uh when you're editing this because I don't I don't want to just IP theft this person but I think they say something like uh is this the same podcast you guys were talking about because like this character just dirty talked to plant and I and I can't believe it and then later it's like never mind I don't remember what happiness is <laughs> okay 
for the record, people who are watching this after it's been uploaded, th- that is in the a link to that is in the description. Since this is a podcast, I don't usually edit any of the visual el- elements. Okay. All right. Yeah. I thought. All right. Yeah. I th- I figured maybe for the YouTube video. Nah. I I like to keep it. I- I'm lazy. That's it's really just that I'm lazy. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, but that's that's cool. That's cool. I definitely recommend giving it a listen. Mm-hmm. Honestly, after you started talking about it more, I think I actually have heard of this. Oh, sweet. Never tried it, but I might have to at some point. Yeah, it's, in my opinion, very good story. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how do you feel about YouTube as a platform? Oh, God. Well, okay. The thing about YouTube is that it is wonderful. It's a free video sharing site. It, like, it's it, a lot of sites that do what YouTube does would require a subscription or, or, or a fee or, or behind a paywall. And YouTube doesn't do that. And I think that that's incredible. Um, I personally have never minded ads, really. So it never really bothered me that the trade-off for having a free open platform was a lot of ads. I, like, that's, I, that doesn't bother me at all. I think that that about YouTube is great. I think that the restrictions and the copyright are a hellscape, Um, especially monetization, (laughs) because it's like they keep changing the rules about what's like able to be monetized. And then they don't tell you the rules. And then and then it's like, oh, someone in the background of your like go to the hair salon with me vlog was singing these bars of a Kanye song. So we're going to copy strike this video. It's, it's gotten crazy. Um, and that specifically makes me, uh, less, uh, makes me think less fondly towards YouTube, but, um, mm-hmm. Understandably I think so. that, yeah, I think that in concept, it's wonderful. Okay, and do you ever want to monetize your videos, or have you monetized your videos already? I have monetized my videos. Um, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the wonderful thing about 1.9 million views. You rack up those watch hours pretty fast. <laughs> um, yeah, my videos are monetized. Um, I None of them are long enough for mid-rolls, which is good, because I don't like mid-rolls that much. Like I, like, I get it if it's, like a uh like a story so it can function as kind of a commercial break but in terms of songs monetizing uh or rather uh mid rolls in songs makes no fucking sense to me um well yeah my content is uh is monetized uh if you skip my ads i'll hate you forever that's a joke don't worry you can skip (laughs) um yeah it's uh you know what it's uh it's it's decent passive income Mm mm-hmm um, so what do you do besides music and animatics, if anything else, as far as art goes? Well, I, uh, I do write, uh, little comedy sketches, and, uh, I do write musicals on my own time as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm a big fan of writing, I, I, uh, and there's only so much you can, uh, get across in the lyrics of one song. Um, so, uh, Ian can attest to this but I, I i write little comedy sketches sometimes and uh i have written uh, i've successfully written one like short 15 minute musical that uh i i still think i can probably produce it i think it's funny i think it's i think it's a good enough concept mm-hmm. and will we will we be seeing that on your uh, youtube at some point oh man here's hoping Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Mm-hmm. So, which of your songs are you most proud of? Probably uh, my Carl Jacobs song, The Lover. In in concept, at least. Uh, I think if I were to do it now, I'd execute it a lot better, but I really like the concept behind it, and I really like the melody I used for it. Um, so if, like, like, strictly speaking, that's, like, my quote-unquote favorite song but uh i think that in terms of like like (laughs) what song i'm most proud of that stands as is it's probably uh as of right now on my channel uh is out of sight and out of mind which is a uh song i wrote from tabo's uh yes 
Tubbo's perspective about uh, when Tommy died. Because remember when that happened? Mm, I remember. Uh, uh, I remember listening to that one. Actually, that one got me a little bit emotional for a song. Ooh, hell yeah! <laughs> and it's. Uh, I think it's funny because um, I. I'm I'm a I'm a big uh, fan of the whole like music is really fun and bouncy and upbeat and uh, the the lyrics are a little bit darker, so it's it's nice because you get instances where it's like uh, yeah that song is like really emotional and then it's the same song that has an entire section where someone just yells dance break. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Tonal whiplash, jeez. So, what uh, what do you have coming down the line as far as uh, what you're uploading to your channel? Anything, any uh, any releases that might be coming soon? You would want to tell us about? Ooh, do you want insider information? Yeah, yeah. What can what can you tell me that you might not normally tell the fans, huh? What's going on behind oh, yeah, the scenes? Yeah. What what can I tell just you and nobody else? Yeah, yeah, just me. It's okay. I'll mute us. Yeah. I'll mute us. You can just tell me. I, I'll I'll bleep it out. They yeah, they won't yeah, get to hear it. Don't worry. It'll be great for good podcasting. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah. No. Okay. So actually, uh, I do have a release coming out, and I think that's funny because I think it was Jamie earlier who was like, "Your bio says the content taste of creators, but you haven't uploaded in months. Suck my dick. I'm uploading tomorrow." <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I'm uploading a song. It is called Behind the Smile, and I'm uploading it tomorrow, which is Sunday the 22nd, if you are not listening to this today. Um, uh -huh. I'm uploading that tomorrow. Um, I'm probably, like, 2 p.m. PST, which is, uh, you're in EST, right? That's 5 p.m. EST. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, yeah, there's content coming, I promise, and it's... Maybe my favorite one I've done so far. Really? How exciting! Yeah. All right. It's, it's 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 a vibe, dude. I'm I'm really excited for people to hear it. Okay, well, if you're watching this on Twitch right now, here's a quick link to Medio's channel. Make sure oh, you, you go again, subscribe you so you see when this again. is coming out. Uh, make sure you, make sure you subscribe so you know when that's coming out. And if you're watching this after it has already been uploaded. Um, the link to this song is in the description. It will be at the top of the list, separate from oh, all the other ones. Cool. So make sure you go check it out right away after you're done listening to this. Though, don't leave me, please. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching this far. We had to split these into two recordings because of some stuff happening at my college. Uh, if things sound a bit different in this kind of second half, that's because they are. Enjoy. So, Medio. Wow, alright, nope. jeez, I'm starting over, starting over, that's it, uh, yep, alright, uh, three, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good god, uh, so, Medio, could you tell me a little bit more about La Manberg the Musical? Oh, I would love to, dude, I'd absolutely love to, uh, so La Manberg the Musical is, uh, this, this crazy little project uh, I don't know if you've heard about it, but La Manberg the Musical is uh, a whole bunch of us, and we're taking the events of the Dream SMP, and we're making them good, and also adding music. Making them good? Uh, yes. And you know how it's shitty and bad? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I hate that. Yeah, I hate the, the Dream, Dream SMP. SMP. Yeah, hate yeah, Dream it, SMP. it really sucks. Well, it's it, like, all yeah, very cringe, very cringe. Yeah. Yeah, very cringe and bad. Totally hate it. Yeah, but this yeah. project is good. Um uh -huh. and we're writing uh all original music. Um and we're even this is something we don't talk about very often, but the music discs um I I looked this up cuz I'm a smart smart boy. Uh <laughs> I looked this up and you're not allowed to use the music discs if Minecraft is not directly involved and like an animatic musical is just a little bit too far removed from Minecraft itself, so we're actually um, remaking the discs as well. We're like doing um, uh, melodies inspired by the discs themselves. So like when we say it's all original music, it's all original music. Aha, uh -huh, that's super cool. I feel like you've skipped quite a bit of explanation there, though. I got to be honest with you. Sorry. 
Um, you think you can tell us like, the SMP. basic components of it? Musical. Y'all are familiar with musicals, right? Well, I'm gonna assume yes. So, <laughs> we're making a musical based on the events of the Dream SMP, and it's going to be in animatic style. Um, it's separated into a two-act structure with one interlude, and each act is separated into chapters, which might seem like a lot, but it's YouTube, so, like, you know, we can't upload giant chunks of 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 uh of content at once or else youtube will decide that we suck and are bad very true um, very true i'm actually going to stop you right yeah. there uh if you guys want to hear more about the podcast wow all right if you guys want to hear more about the musical <laughs> good god i can't <laughs> wow i'm so good at this if you want to hear more about the musical go check out fifth the fifth episode of the create stuff podcast where i interview the director i think i actually said that in part one too but you know whatever we're not gonna think no, about yeah. that repetition so... repetition's good oh, i yes, like yes, that yes. you uh, shilling, almost went into i like that you almost went into promoing your own podcast on my own podcast, yeah. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. I've been in shill mode yeah. ever since I came to college, I swear. Like, every single person I meet who asks me anything about myself, I'm like, oh yeah, well, I run a podcast. <laughs> I've explained what it is honestly, so many times. Same. same. No, because, like, uh, you know, back when you'd actually talk to people in real life instead of just on the internet and slowly waste away. Um, yeah, I remember that. I, yeah, it's crazy, right? I uh, can't believe I ever <laughs> did that. Um... I that's like there's a certain amount of shame you need to get around and then after that it's like yeah I also have a YouTube channel do you want to subscribe do you want to watch my content like it's there's no room for shame no room for like oh I don't know am I annoying is it is it maybe they should like no you want to watch my content I know that you don't know that yet though so I'm telling you Okay, actually, that's interesting. Tell, could you tell me a little bit more about how you managed to get over that hurdle of, like, being able to tell people stuff without feeling embarrassed about your own work? Because that's something I personally struggle with, too, and I bet a lot of the people watching this also struggle with it. Well, there's a couple ways, and the main two is, number one, uh, and this one's a little easier, you are going to be embarrassed either way. Um... So all you gotta do is the super healthy thing where you don't think about that. Uh-huh. That, that's part one. You don't think about it. Um, and then eventually, you, you just won't think about it. But, like, at the beginning, you're still gonna have those feelings like, oh, am I being annoying? Am I being... Am I this, 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 and this? Uh, and that's fine, you know? eventually you just need to ignore those and then get to your whole you know get to the meat of what you want to say that's part one part two is and this one's a little harder um come to grips with the fact that you're gonna be annoying to some people mm -hmm. that's difficult yeah that's actually like no joke the most uh um like the most important lesson i guess or like thing that i've uh realized is that there are just gonna be some people who hate your fucking guts or think that you're the most annoying motherfucker on the planet and they will think that no matter what you do and they will try to get other people to think that no matter what you do and you just need to accept that at some point mm -hmm. Okay, and is that something that, like, you struggled with yourself? Like, did you have uh, uh, trouble accepting that? I mean, I think everyone would have trouble accepting that. Uh, it, it's, it's not something that is often within human nature to want to, like... First of all, accept that something is out of your control. And then second, accept that that thing is how you are perceived by other people. Um, but, Very like... True. <laughs> It's, it sounds unhealthy when you say it in words, but literally the easiest way to do that and the easiest way to get around that weird, like, not weird, it's a very rational, but get around that block is to just pretend it's not happening and then it won't. And that sounds like bullshit and that sounds like repressing feelings and that sounds like all this lovely stuff you're not supposed to do, but like you can very easily overcome that kind of shit if you just decide that 
you're not going to be embarrassed by it anymore. And then you spend a long time still being embarrassed, but lying about it to yourself. And then you're going to realize one day that you're just not embarrassed about it anymore. Mm hmm. I've, it's also like you kind of just have to get used to the feeling of it you know and one eventually it'll just become like it'll become natural you know mm, yeah exactly right uh you know i have a friend who once gave me a very similar piece of advice uh though in very different contexts he was saying oh, yeah? that it's actually a really smart idea to go up to people like at like at a grocery store and uh just say like hey or like go up to the cashier and be like hey can i like run your station and then they're going to say no obviously right yeah and that's how you get used to being rejected you ask people for things that you know they'll say no to and then you just eventually get like so used to being said no to that it doesn't feel bad anymore when it happens in a real context oh that's some that's some social experiment shit it God. is actually i would be interested to test that i'm gonna have to keep that in I mind mean, you know i actually have a similar philosophy on that about making a making an idiot of yourself and this one i actually still do it's it's one of those like things that are good to trick yourself with so if you on purpose a lot make dumb jokes and you really commit to the bit and you like make an absolute fool of yourself on your own terms often that's fine like that in in that situation you're the one with the control you're the one who's perp uh, uh perpetrating per yeah perpetuating you're the one who's yeah, perpetuating yeah, the joke you're the one who is doing it on purpose and so if you ever do actually mess up for real like and it's a complete accident and you feel stupid and it's a like you feel like a complete idiot people just assume that it's another one of your weird jokes and <laughs> That feeling is so powerful, dude. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess that's uh, I guess that's one method. <laughs> I mean, like, and I, I didn't do that on purpose. I just kind of was an idiot who committed way hard to jokes anyway. Um, and then I realized that, like, if you actually say the wrong word, or if you actually, you know, give someone the wrong thing, or you actually kind of fuck up, then like people just assume you do it on purpose like that's so powerful <laughs> i feel like there might be some flaws in your reasoning i'm not gonna lie oh i know there's there's flaws in everything but like on a small scale <laughs> on a small scale that shit works wonders uh -huh. Uh -huh. i can imagine it being very good for streaming honestly maybe i should take that in the note when i'm stream when i'm live streaming yeah I mean, that's that's kind of, I mean, I'm getting into, I guess, more personal stuff, but I, I guess that's what I'm here for. Uh, that's what I do whenever I, um, like, make a typo or say the wrong word, is I really lean into the joke. Because there's nothing that makes people want to make fun of you more than you not wanting that to happen. So <laughs> the quicker you can be like... Oh, oh, that's really funny that I said that. Anyway, and then you continue, then the the less anyone's ever going to talk about it. Like, when I make, a, like, even a super embarrassing typo in a group chat, if I, if the next message I send is, oh, haha, uh, repeated typo, that's hilarious. Anyway, and then I continue making my point, it's, like, it's fine. It's all fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually thinking of it that way. That's actually some pretty good advice. I've never thought about that. Dude, I'm chock full of great advice. <laughs> okay. A, a very, very mediocre amount, though, I will say. Mm, moderately. Moderately mediocre. Yeah, that was a good joke. That was a good one. Uh, yeah, that, that was a good one. That, <laughs> good that, I'll job, clip man. that one and put it on TikTok. Anyways. Yeah, um, clip that one. Put it on TikTok. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, anyways, back to Renegade. Back Renegade. To, <laughs> back to the musical. Um, what is your role in the musical, the Mandarin hmm. musical? Yes. Okay. My role in the musical. Uh, so I'm the head of the music department. That's me. I oversee the musicians and I make sure everything's in order. Um, I do voice act for it as well, but uh, 
uh, technically the music stuff uh, takes precedent. Um, so in terms of music, I like I said, I'm kind of the head of the musician team. Um, and so uh, it's my job to make sure that all of the uh, well, this is not going to make sense without context. So context for how our music works. Um, this actually, I'm I'm going to clarify this here because this uh, often is confusing to people. Our musicians don't write the music; they compose it and arrange it. Um, the demos really? are, yeah, the demos are already written because that's because it's narrative. Like it's it, it in a musical, it has to be exactly what we need it to be. So we have a separate uh, we have separate people who write demos, and that's. Like, it's usually a live demo, and it's got the lyrics uh, for the song, and so what I do is I compile a Google Drive folder of those demos, and uh, working with Ian, of course, because he's my lovely boss, um, we assign each demo to a musician. And so, so it is my job to make sure everyone's got their assignments that everyone's doing their assignments uh, i also have assignments myself for it so I, I am also making music for the musical um and like it's my job to make sure that music runs smoothly during the musical i also for chapter one at least am the only one who made background music uh i think i mentioned that in part one but um yeah, the only background music that wasn't made by me is the reimagining of Mela High, which is made by uh, W, which is another producer on the team. Okay, okay, interesting. So, you say you do a little bit of voice acting. What character do you voice act? Okay, yeah, so I voice act uh, Tommy and its chat, and I'm not going to explain the chats because I'm 100% sure Ian already explained that. Oh yes, um, definitely. If you want to know about that, Fifth episode of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so I voice act Emmy, or imitate, uh, which is Tommy's chat. Uh, and uh, all chats um, sing ensemble as well as... Uh, I mean, you know, they're not like self-inserts and they're not like OCs. So we don't want to give them too much, like, uh, too much of the limelight. Because that's, you know, that's... We'd rather, like, focus on the actual characters that are pre-established. Um, but from time to time, a chat will have, like, their own line in a song or uh, something to that degree because that would be represented by the Twitch chat itself. Um, so we're just kind of giving that a voice. Um, but, yeah, so uh, as as Immy, I suppose, which is, a, which is like, a, just, like, a minor supporting role. Um, I sing ensemble, and I sing uh, any any specific uh, lines, and then I speak any any specific lines. You know, if like a like like you do in any production where you've got voice actors. Right, right. You think you could give us a little demo of what Emmy sounds like? Oh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> God, I I had a where's the I read a I read a I read out a line. Hold on, let me find this copy pasta because 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 it was really good. Um, <laughs> I found it. I found it. All right, go on. All right. Okay. Also, according to God's statistics, only a fifty percent of people are going to heaven. So, if you end up enjoying this God, consider praying. It's free, and you can always sin later. Enjoy the religion. <laughs> Enjoy the religion. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay very nice very nice thank you it's basically me except i'm five years younger <laughs> so what songs do you appear on as uh emmy oh god uh i I'm, I'm i'm considering whether i can spill the beans for the entirety of act one or if i should just say stuff about chapter one 
Well, I mean, you know, they don't, they, how about I mute us both on stream and you just tell me, like, off stream, and then I'll decide if it's okay or not. <laughs> You'll have it recorded? Yeah, You'll yeah. Just... No, I, no, I mean, fine. no, I won't record it. I'll just write it's, it down it's in a no, separate I'll Google just... Doc and post it later. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it safe and just talk about chapter one, if, if yeah, you Yeah, no, good idea, good idea. Oh, but of course. The, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> there are no, s sadly... I'm I'm I so regret to inform you, there are no Emmy uh Emmy like appearing songs in chapter one where it's like where on the lyric doc there's a separate highlight for the character and one of the characters is Emmy. Mm, okay, okay. So it's just like ensemble roles then. Yeah, for now. But I do definitely have uh lines in chapter one, and I know that because I had to score them. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'm very much looking forward to watching Act One and hearing it. Dude, honestly, so am I. And uh, for those watching, uh, after this has been uploaded, uh, the trailer for Chapter 1, linked in the description. Go check it out. It's supposed to come out. Uh, honestly, once this, once the time this video is out, it might already be out. It's uh, like oh, it's relatively right. soon from when I'm recording this on August 28th. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. August 28th, 2021, 20, I suppose I should say. But uh, yeah, so you're the head of the music department too so do you like also uh like go through auditions for other people who want to do voice acting positions or like uh, work on the music at all mm, yeah so i uh so the uh, so the people that i go uh, that i am there for when we go through auditions is a uh, musician voice actor and ensemble um i'm like I'm I'm only there for voice acting and ensemble, not as the like primary, the like primary person. That would be uh, that would probably be uh Jake or Grassy Medley uh, and I don't think we've done a new round of auditions yet. So uh, Joao Joao Lucas Martin, my beloved, uh, has not Zhao. had a chance to <laughs> Admiral Zhao. Love that guy. Uh, <laughs> um uh so for voice acting and ensemble i'm just there to be like oh yeah this is a good voice the tonality is good because i'm the i'm 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 the I'm, I'm one of the singing people you know that knows about singing <laughs> uh but for musician ensembles ensembles what the fuck am i saying for musician auditions <laughs> um i am the one that's going through those primarily uh and uh i don't i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to say that i'm like harsh cuz i'm not harsh it's just i think my standards are very high and mm -hmm. uh i need to check myself sometimes uh huh well i mean you kind of have to be like that when you're when you're going through this many auditions i know the musical gets a lot of uh, it gets a lot of auditions Oh, yeah honestly yeah it it uh god any info about auditions has left my brain because it has been so long since we've gone through auditions or or that we've that we've had to hold auditions uh do you have like the whole cast for all of act one now act one? Oh, for sure everything okay. audio wise for act one not just chapter one for act one is completely done oh interesting okay yeah so I'm assuming it's more like uh, the animatics that need to come out now. Yep. Okay. And also uh, also just sectioning off Act 1 so that into like 20 to 30 minute more digestible uh, videos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, for the record, if you want to hear more about what the animatic process is going to be like, uh, you should come back in about a week, Saturday, 6pm. But uh, anyways. Oh yeah? I haven't gotten a chance to see it. Who do you have on next? <laughs> okay uh yeah i mean i guess i already did announce it public spam account yo you got psa yeah i'm so excited dude i can't wait oh sweet psa is so cool man i psi P psi fuck psa <laughs> and my are homies it's great uh yeah, they're like they're really cool from what i know so far love their animatics they're Oh, they're absolutely so cool yeah it's gonna be a blast i'm i'm a hundred percent gonna tune in for that 
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. Can you can't be is first person I had on, on the podcast. But wow, pod. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> what was that? Fuck, neither of us can talk today. <laughs> Not good for our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to listen to this back and it's just going to be like an hour of incomprehensible babbling. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Can You Get Bees actually showed me PSA's like Schlatt animatic. I was like, whoa, that's so cool. And like, they really loved it. Like, they were so, like, they were talking about it nonstop. And being able to go back and say, hey, guess who I got on the podcast? It just feels so good. <laughs> that's like, uh, so valid, dude. It's like, it's nice. I, I, the greatest feeling. But, uh, anyways, anyways, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, be here for that, please. Um, and if you're watching this later on, after I've uploaded this i don't know when that's actually going to be don't know how long this is going to take me to edit but uh you know very possible that it has already happened very possible that it won't happen yet if it hasn't happened yet saturday 6 p.m be here est but uh anyways let's see what we were talking about the musical <laughs> um, that old thing <laughs> yeah that, that little thing are you doing any animation for the uh musical i know you do some animatics on your channel so i figured i'd ask Hmm, yeah, that specifically, I am not. I opted out of that very, very early in the process. Mm, understandable. Uh, yeah, I, because, <laughs> like, listen, like, I could, I guess, but it would be very bad compared to the standard we have, and also, it would be just not worth it for, for, for my quality of art to, to, like, like, it's, ugh, no. Okay, like it's not worth the time I'd put in, not worth the time that the the rest of the team would have to wait. Like that's not like no, I, I as I you, see I it, you. um <laughs> my art is just good enough to do some cartoony lyric videos for my channel. Mhm. Mm I get what you're saying. I think like uh it can definitely be said you have more important roles to fill. <laughs> Fuck, I hope so. Or I shouldn't say more important. I mean Roles that suit you better, that you can do better. Mm hmm that, that, that I can get on board with. Hell yeah. So if YouTube were to shut down today, what would you do? Cry. Ah, same answer that uh, Professor Viral gave. Oh, great. I mean, it's a common one. Um, <laughs> no, if YouTube were gonna shut down, I'd probably, uh, move over to Twitch. Uh, Twitch? And... Because that's, like, the next platform people know. Because the mm -hmm. thing about YouTube is that it's one of the only, like, free streaming, like, video streaming services mm -hmm. that is widely known about. So, like, either I fucking fight my way tooth and nail up into, like, Netflix, or I move over to Twitch, and I just am like, hey, guys, so, um, every video is a premiere now. Watch my videos, but I'm not actually live. Okay, I guess that works. Yeah, at least until at least until like the internet comes up with a better YouTube. Right. Because that right. will happen if YouTube shuts down. Naturally, it has to. I'm sure something will come up very fast. Who knows? Maybe mm -hmm. it'll be Vimeo. Ugh, maybe, maybe Vimeo finally is like, maybe they shouldn't have to pay. <laughs> Keep getting ads from Vimeo in my promotions. It's so annoying. Oh, yeah? I never signed up for Vimeo. I don't have a Vimeo account. I don't know how I got these. But anyways, so I listened to Jubilation Station, your Jubilee line redux. What is a redux? Uh, fuck, man. <laughs> Let me look up this definition real quick. <laughs> nice. No, I've had to answer this a couple times. <laughs> um, so, uh, a redux, like technically speaking, a redux is a word that's supposed to mean like, brought back or bringing back um mm -hmm. and so the thing is though is that i wasn't sure what to call this because it was not technically a cover even though it was but like if you just say jubilee line cover people are gonna expect something specific right and right. that's not what i was that's not what i had and so I was like, okay, what are the other words? Remix? But it's not a remix. Not really. Um, mm -hmm. So I was, I was like, all right. And I searched my, I searched my brain and, uh, 
and and redux is one of the words that came to mind because it's got an x in it that's a fucking cool word if it's got an x in it <laughs> and uh <laughs> and like you know it technically is it's a redux and uh i figured that'd be a fun little thing to be able to say uh i was way more proud of uh <laughs> of the of the actual name of it because Fucking something about Jubilation Station fucking made me laugh so hard. <laughs> I like the title a lot too. It, it it really like honestly Jubilee Line and Jubilation Station like they both match their respective songs so much. Oh yeah, for sure. Like you can really was... tell what you're getting into with Jubilation Station. Yeah, exactly. It was just gonna be like it was gonna be like Jubilation Tracks or something because like. Because Jubilee Lion, like, you know, like the, well, it's not called. Are you planning on doing that for any other songs on Your City Gave Me Asthma? Uh, wasn't planning on it, but I might. Uh, because, ugh, I, people always hate me for this. I don't love Wilbur's music. Like, I get what he really? goes for, and I think it's just not my vibe. Um, Making Jubilation Station was prime. It started off before I decided to do like a full fucking overhaul on it. It started off as like a very salty project on trying to quote unquote fix the vocals for Jubilee Line. <laughs> Cause Wilbur, fuck man, uh, love him to death. He's great. It he sings in a very specific way that makes me very specifically a little bit furious. <laughs> yeah, the ones that we love most often tend to do that. To be fair, yeah. Um, but I think that Lovejoy fits him a lot better, so I'm glad that he's uh that he's doing that. Uh, okay, that's cool. When you say that you like don't like his music a lot, do you mean like Your City Gave Me Asthma or like the Nice Guy trilogy? Uh, or like both. Well, honestly. The only song of his that I liked before, like, okay, for, and even Lovejoy is not, like, it's totally my vibe, but, like, that one I get. Um, the only song that I like before that is, um, is Your New Boyfriend. I, I like that one. That one, that one, that one sounds good to me, and I, and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But it, re like, the rest of his music, it's just, I think it's just something that is not clicking in my brain, you know? Like, so many people like his music, and I'm not going to sit here and say that it's bad music, because uh, it isn't. Uh, but, like, I don't know what it is, man. It's, it's just, yeah, just not my vibe. I get you, I get you. It's not for everyone. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a high enough IQ to understand Wilbur Soot music. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Don't have a high enough IQ to understand the uh, the Minecraft Twitch streamer's uh, music career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so Inside. I uh, brought that up a little bit uh, during a little technical error that we had, but it made me want to ask you. I asked the same mm -hmm. question of uh, Ian, but what was like, how did you feel about Inside? Actually, yeah, how did you feel about Inside? I already knew that Ian liked it. I don't think I actually asked him that. But how did you feel about it? No, yeah, I, I, I did. I liked it. It was, a. Uh, I I think I've watched it twice. And the first time... Okay, my computer monitor is fucking huge. Because the one I had didn't work. And I had to essentially use a small TV. Um, <laughs> so the first time I watched it, I shut everything off and i put it on my tv and i sat there for two hours while i watched it um uh -huh. and that like i i really enjoyed it uh and then the second time i watched it i watched it how i usually watch things which is uh on a much smaller screen uh while multitasking <laughs> okay so how did you enjoy it oh yeah for sure i I, I definitely did. I, I, I really did enjoy it. How did you feel at the end of it? Like, did it make you anxious? Did it make you really depressed? Did you think it was just funny? Uh, there were definitely some points where, where I thought it was fucking hilarious, but, like, I just... I mean... 
you know that? You might not. I don't know how mentally stable you are. You know that, like, <laughs> feeling where it's where you just feel empty for long periods of time? Yeah, unfortunately. No? Okay. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, awesome. No, yeah, you, I do. You, I had, do. You, had, you had cut out a little bit. Um. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this person's like, insane. I can't believe I had him on the podcast. It's like that, but like a speed run of that. Like I think during um during during that funny feeling, I actually uh like pinged a bunch of my friends and was like, "Hey, I really love and appreciate you, man." Like I just like <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm so hesitant to talk about inside because I. Well, one, I feel like there's nothing I can say about it that hasn't already been said, and two, I, like, I just feel like anything I say about it is just gonna come off as some, like, fake deep bullshit. I get what you're being, and I understand your hesitation, and, like, you don't have to say anything you're uncomfortable with, but I really do want to hear what you have to say, honestly, and I, I think that at this point in the podcast, nobody who is listening to this is going to think that like you're not say what you're saying is not coming from the heart. Yeah, that makes sense. I appreciate that. Um. Yeah, for sure. Well, okay. So, I found it really interesting how he framed uh the difference and the new mounting difference between the quote unquote real world and the internet. Like, it, it wasn't even one of his. Songs. It was just this one bit he did, where he he just sat down and he and he talked about how the real world is just a staging ground for the internet, as if he was giving like a TED talk. Like I think that that out of everything hit me the hardest in the special. Mm-hmm. Really? So what about that? Like hit you hard? I don't know. It was, I think, because there's there's a really big focus, uh, for me at least specifically, um, of trying to make sure that my perception and my time, uh, online, like spending time trying to develop a brand, making content, doing a doing a fucking musical with a hundred plus other people. I, I, I try to make sure that that doesn't become everything, I guess, that that it, that if if this were one day, like if I was one, if the internet stopped one day, that I would be okay. And just like, it, it kind of, it was, it was kind of like a very um, simply put example of everything that I'm trying not to do and everything that i'm fucking terrified i'm gonna end up doing Mm -hmm. but it's i've got a thing about bo burnham and you can cut this out but i'm gonna say i'm gonna say this thing uh if you don't mind go for it no idea what you're about to say but go for it anyways it's nothing no don't worry i'm you're not i'm not gonna get canceled okay look we all saw the bulge (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's like no, okay, it's alright. I got so... turned on too. It's okay. No, I mean we all did, Sean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's I... it's like a <laughs> like okay. I okay. Like for example, I can never be Bo Burnham for like the simple reason that I do not care as much as he does. You know, like he takes care to ensure that we, the audience, are aware that he does not invest emotion in us, just like. Every, every other content creator, you know, he sees his audience as numbers and dollar signs. And, and and that's not, like, a value judgment on him. That's just by fault of the platform. And and I don't just mean YouTube. I mean, like, all platforms. You know, like, I don't know how someone's aunt died or that they listened to my music and it got them through hard times or that they think I suck shit. Like, I don't know that, personally. But it's right. kind of part of my job to know that or at least pretend to know that. And I think that that's where a lot of people differ from Bo Burnham, because I, like, I do not despise the game so wholly that I refuse to play it, you know? 
Like, I still follow trends, and I sometimes pander to audiences. And, like, again, by kind of default of the platform, I kind of have to engage in the strengthening of parasocial relationships. Like, I like I call my audience friends, for example, and I do that because I don't like guys, because that, that just, like, it, it feels unnecessarily gendered to me, and I feel like friends is a good gender-neutral term. Um, okay. you know, and I, and I say things like, oh, I love you guys when I sign off. And part of that is just how I perceive the world. Like, that's how I talk to people in real life. And that's how I talk to people when we're just in voice calls. Um, and that's why it makes it so dangerous that I've kind of made it part of my branding. And that's why I think it's so fucking funny to see people try to be Bo Burnham. Because it's like taking his words and thoughts and and ideals... And, like, even his shortcomings and, like, stitching them together and adding your own thoughts until you have something that, like, vaguely represents mimicry. And it's taking the format that he established and then bastardizing it by doing the exact thing he opposes. And it's just, and it is just following a trend and pandering to an audience and riding on the back of a pre-established moral high ground. And the thing is, they might not even be doing it on purpose. Like, maybe they do genuinely share his views and relate to his art and want to put more like it out into the world. But it, ironically, it's kind of like an immediate failure to do so, either on, like, an, uh, what's the fucking word? Like, an uh, ideological or a physical ground. Because to succeed, you can't really do what he does. You can't tell your audience you hate them because they won't stay. You, know, you can't ignore trends or refuse to pander because nobody will see you. You can't reject parasocial relationships and still want the rewards. You know, the, the true formula of Bo Burnham doesn't work for independent creators. It works for people who have already played the game, won, and now despise it. And I think that that's, like... <sighs> fucking sorry. <laughs> It just, ugh. It makes no, me fucking good. crazy good. sometimes, man. No, I totally get where you're coming from, and that's honestly really interesting. I've never thought of it, like, from the way you said it, but, like, now that you're saying it, I can actually definitely recognize that, like, that I've definitely seen in some other people. Yeah. Hmm. That was, no, that was, I'm definitely keeping that in. That was very interesting. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I can be, a, I'm glad I can be a good content cow. For sure, for sure. For That's sure. what you're here for. Yeah, of course, of course. By the way, if anyone wants to talk to me about that Bo Burnham rant, please feel free to. Mm -hmm. My DMs are open always, and I'd love to hear what people other than me think. Okay, so Elle asks, in the musical, what's the good quality that you look for in people to bring on the team? Okay, I'm I'm going to sum it up in professionalism, but... I'm going to clarify. So from my end, what I see are the auditions. And I'm going to like kind of put it at this point. You know, what do you look for in people to bring on the team? You kind of look for that uh, through auditions. Uh, and something that is always good to see is when someone doesn't start their audition with, I know it's kind of bad, but like here it is anyway. Because one... Why ever would you want to hire somebody who says that their audition is bad? Like, you may as well click off. If they don't think they're good enough to be on the project, why should you think they're good enough to be on the project, you know? And I know it stems from, like, self-deprecation and trying to say it yourself until before someone else says that you're bad, but it really does bite you in the ass. Like, it's it's not a good way to go about auditioning specifically. Um, and it also shows that, like, bud, if you think it's bad, re-record it. This is a recording submission. You can do it again. It doesn't just have to be that. Um, so that specifically is uh, good for the audition process. Um, and then we always try to do, at least with uh, people who are going to be speaking, so like voice actors and ensemble, um, we do a live audition as well as the uh, submit a recording audition. and. If you're, like, an asshole, we're not gonna hire you. And that, like, on a surface level, that seems like a kind of shallow thing to say or a weird thing to say for a project, but a very big part of any project is how well the people on the team get along. 
And if you can't manage to get along with the people who are auditioning you, then that just does not bode well for, like, for for any of your prospects moving forward. Which is not to say, by the way, friends, that if you auditioned and didn't make it, you were an asshole. That's not what that means. I want to clarify that. It's most often it's not personal. But sometimes it is personal, and that's not a bad thing, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. That makes sense, honestly. And I feel like that also, mm-hmm. like, that, uh, the professionalism thing you said, like, deprecating yourself before, uh, before others can do it, also something that appears in Inside, and that was probably one of the parts that hit me the hardest, honestly. Is that I'm talking about right after, uh, right after Unpaid Intern? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that is that is that one of the things that you struggle with? Oh, uh, I mean, kind of, maybe. I've never actually thought about that. Uh, you know, it probably is. <laughs> I, I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever objectively looked at that about myself, but I do feel like I often. Uh, I mean, I feel like a little bit. It's mostly in my head, though. I I rarely ever voice my own self-deprecation of myself. Though I do often yeah. like. I I feel like I do have this kind of. Wow, okay, I, I'm not the one being interviewed here, but I'm going to say this anyways. I might, might cut it out, who knows. But um, yeah. I, I do often feel like I just, for some reason, don't have the ability to be as good as everyone else's. And I don't really know why that is. Like, it's almost like, just because I am me, I'm just not on that level. And I never will be. I don't know why, though. Dude, I I fucking feel that. That's... <sighs> I I actually... I have an example of this Um, that is you know based on music but i think that the i think that the uh, the point transfers easily so definitely um so when i might have talked about this in the first one but i don't think i did so when you are making music and you're starting off um it's not going to sound like quote unquote real music and and i know that sounds totally bizarre to anyone who doesn't make music but everyone i've talked to who has made music is like oh yeah i know exactly what you mean um because in the beginning it just sounds like a collection of uh melodies and chords and and drum beats and vocals which is all music is but in the beginning it just doesn't sound like quote unquote real music and it's depending on you know how things go is that you know like you might not ever get to the point where it sounds like quote unquote real music to you, but what you need to remember is it sounds like real music to everybody else. And it might sound like bad music, but that's mute like it's real music. And I think that uh that really applies for everything else. Uh like like this I struggle more with this with art cuz that's not one of the things I that I tend to hone as as uh harshly so when i see other people's art i go oh that's real art and even though all the components to their art is the same as my art it just doesn't compute sometimes that what you yourself are doing is valid and is real and like honestly all i can offer for that is just remember that you have a bias against yourself and that if you saw somebody else doing exactly what you were doing regardless of like you know subscriber counts and 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 any of that bullshit if you saw someone else doing what you were doing you wouldn't think to invalidate that for a second right oh fuck <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna have to think about that one for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, that actually hits a little bit hard. Uh, I completely yeah. see what you're saying, though. I'm gonna have to, like, okay, yeah, actually, that completely puts things into perspective. <laughs> I'm glad that I, yeah, I'm glad that I can talk about this, because I, it's not, well, I, I say this in a non-literal sense, but it's not really part of my brand as a person to talk about uh, heavy shit very often, so... I'm glad that I can prove I'm not a fucking idiot to to all those who may not who may know me. Right, right. No, I'm very happy to like hear really deep stuff like that on this podcast honestly because one of my goals in making this was 
for our artists to be able to come here and like you know hear another artist talk about themselves and their struggles and like you know go walk away feeling like they have you know a little bit of like something a little bit encouraging something to think about you know and like there are a lot of issues that like all artists struggle with and like you know that don't really get put into words super often if you get what i mean like exactly what we just talked about you know i don't think i've ever heard anybody else bring that up honestly not sure if you have i have no clue man i i have this fatal flaw where i assume everyone i i assume that all the things i think everyone already knows and has known for a long time so i just never say it i like to assume that because uh otherwise I, I worry that I'm going to fall into, like, thinking that um, I know better than other people or that I am in any way uh, more special than other people because my experiences are in any way unique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I get what you're saying, and I feel like, honestly, like, mo for the most part, that is pretty true that everybody is experiencing the same stuff. But at the same time, I feel like so few people ever put it into words because they just assume, you know, everybody already understands it. But there are so many people out there who are, like, experiencing this stuff that don't get it and don't know how to, like, fix it or would never even think, like, that it's a, that it's a problem. Like, honestly, uh, especially with me, like, with the whole, you know, just inherently thinking I'm never going to be as good as anyone else just because, you know, like, I'm me and, and they're them. Like, that's just not true at all. And what you said about, like, if I saw, if I saw someone else making this podcast, like, with exactly the same production quality, I would not think it's bad at all. I would, I, I mean, you know, I might think there are some, some issues, obviously, but I would think it's pretty cool, and I would still totally be like, I'd be into it, you know? But since it's me, I just don't feel that good about it. But when I actually put yeah. it into words, I realize how dumb that is. You know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's often, that is often what happens. It's, ugh. I mean... I think that, I think actually it's something about that is that I agree that a lot of people experience the same things, um, or I shouldn't say that because that's classist as hell, um, <laughs> that a lot of artists experience the same emotions towards their art, I'll say. Um, but I think a lot of people have different reactions to it, which is where you get caught up. Because I, for example, I, like, I, <laughs> I mean... This is gonna sound dumb saying it but i really want to i suppose like make it big i want to have like a lot of subscribers and i want to be like i like i want people to you know like make fan art of me or, or do edits or, or or like ship me with my friends all that weird shit like that that's a benchmark of success in my eyes and i not only do i feel like i am uh at least closer to mentally preparing for what that might be like, I also know that that is what I want to happen. And again, for a long time, I just assumed on some level that everyone wanted fame. And it was a really weird moment when I realized that was not true. I, like... I didn't get into YouTube or anything for a long time because I assumed that the market would be so saturated because I assumed everyone wanted the same thing, which is, looking back on it, so stupid. Um, and it was, like, it was a fucking mind-blowing moment when I realized that there are people who actively hate the idea that they might one day be famous or be seen in any like kind of fandom or celebrity sense and that's like that that concept was so alien to me at the time and it, it really kind of like shifted how i uh like kind of shifted my whole fucking worldview if i'm gonna be honest mm -hmm. i get what you're saying i'm honestly very similar to you on that point like all, all the things you said that you want, like the fame, the big subscriber count, being shipped with my friends, the animatics, all that stuff, I want that a lot too. Like, that is totally the benchmark of success for myself too. And I, I went, like, honestly, exact same thing for me. Like, not, I, I never expected other people would just, like, be making art out here and just not, not want that. But now I can totally get it. Like, but yeah, that I, I is was, complete perspective change. I was even talking to 
one of my friends on the musical, and I'm not going to say their name because I don't know if this is if they want this public, but um, they were like, yeah, I don't think I want to be famous. Like, I think I might, like, really? I think I'd want to, like, cap out at maybe 50k subscribers, and then that's it. I don't want any more than that. Like, that's... And, you know, and they, and they don't do any, like, advertising or, or, or marketing or branding or any of that. And, because they just genuinely don't want it. That's, like, I... On the one hand, that's that seems to me someone who really does want that very desperately. Like, just this, this crazy thought that you might not want that. And then also at the same time, man... It sounds like it's probably very restful. Very restful? Yeah, well, that's it. That, I, that, yeah. Man, I just, <laughs> what that was the end by, of the uh, thought. What do you mean by restful? Well, if you think about all the energy that you're devoting towards succeeding and towards making it big and towards getting all those benchmarks of success, that like on some at least okay i won't say for you but for me it's something that i am thinking about a lot and doesn't really leave my head very often so i just imagine it's probably a lot uh a lot more easygoing when that's not an added uh thing that you're always thinking about no yeah i am i am the exact same way i'm constantly thinking about this like 50% of my thoughts every day are probably taken up by, like, thinking about streaming, about the podcast, about how I can make this a big thing, what I can do to be better, what, like, how I can improve the quality, how I can advertise this, uh, like, spending time editing, like, and you know how much time I spend getting videos ready for TikTok now? I hate TikTok. I always have hated TikTok. It's horrible, but it's also, like, such a good resource. I need to use it. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's worth it in the end. Like, I'm going to be very happy when I have, like, when, like, the fruits of my effort are experienced, given that they are. And I think they will be, honestly. I, you kind of have to, because if you don't, then it's never going to fucking happen. Exactly. And I don't really like thinking about the fact that, like, it, there's a possibility it just will never happen, no matter how long I do this. You know? Like, I got to put the effort in, and I kind of got to believe that uh, my effort will mean something. Yeah, it's... <laughs> you have to treat this like a career if you want it to be one. Exactly. Yeah. And that can be hard sometimes because, for the most part, it's, like, entirely self-imposed. <laughs> yeah, that does so, make things so if, difficult. So if you get to a point where it becomes difficult and it's hard to keep going because you're not immediately seeing these these examples or these this any any proof that you're doing well it becomes you that's responsible for your own unhappiness in that moment. Like, it's not, uh, it's not someone, like, it's not a boss making things go bad. It's not a teacher who's failing you. Like, it's your fault. Well, I, I mean, I mean, you, you could just blame the algorithm. You could blame the algorithm, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good it's idea. Mostly. It's still, like, though, you know, you even, like, you still gotta get around the algorithm by putting the effort in, though. Because that can be manipulated, and people have manipulated them and gotten big. You guys ever heard of Dream or Tommy in it? There's a reason mm. that they're kind of, like, you know, massive. I mean, I got, I got, like, a million views starting at, like, 30 subscribers. Like, it's, it's, it's a fucking, it's a lottery, dude. It is, it is. But, like... You can increase your chances a lot. Absolutely, you can. By doing stuff like having guests on the podcast who make uh, content focused around the Dream SMP. Uh -huh. Of course. Not, I mean, the for Dream the record, SMP... not why I'm having you on the podcast. Just a very nice little uh, benefit. <laughs> I mean, I would understand if that was why. That makes total sense. Like, the Dream SMP is such a weird phenomenon. Like... I mean, not to bring up the forbidden works, but, like, I haven't seen this kind of shit since Homestuck, you know? That's true. Oh, shoot, Homestuck's a thing. I gotta yeah, be honest, no. like, to me, what, I, what, what it most reminds me of is the Undertale fandom, honestly. Oh, yeah, I, I remember that. 
Yeah, like, good god. I really went from being a, a big part of the Undertale fandom to being a big part of the Dream SMP fandom. I have not aged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good good for you, though. That's that's commitment. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Commitment, indeed. But, like, it's... You know how there was there's Homestuck songs, you know, that are just forever... Like, Sarah Zed talked about this. Like, they're just Homestuck songs now because of the animatics, because of the fan culture like i haven't seen that for so long and now we are seeing it again with with the dream smp with like heat waves or 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 fucking jump in the cadillac like i don't actually know what that song is called because i just know that one clip like that's how that's how crazy it's getting and i think that it's interesting you know because it's so much harder for small creators to make any impact when there isn't something bigger to draw an audience towards you with Mm -hmm. and some people say like oh that's selling out that's pandering like i mean yeah that's kind of the point Mm -hmm. no i completely agree you gotta make use of the tools you're given that's just and i mean is. is it really riddle me this is it really all that bad If you're creating content people enjoy and are getting the benefits you want from it, there's no loser in that situation. Right, exactly. That's super true. Like, you just gotta appeal to what people want sometimes, and if if everyone's enjoying it, there's nothing wrong with that. And, like, you know, there are always gonna be be people who are gonna look at it and say, that's cringe, because a lot of other people like it, or maybe because it does have some element of it, maybe that is cringe, but... You know, if people are having fun, who cares? Like, I'm gonna take it one step further. Yeah, it's cringe. Who cares? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I remember I very recently brought up the podcast to someone and said, like, the first guest was someone who writes Dream SMP fan fiction. I could, like, see see it in their face. I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, th- look, man, you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? And also, they were interesting, and I enjoyed it, and I also like their fan fiction. So, screw you. <laughs> if you're watching this, by the way, I'm, I, I'm mostly, like, over-exaggerating. Uh, I know you weren't being serious. True, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I've, I know I've said this in Discord calls, but I don't know if I've ever said it publicly anywhere. And I might have said it in part one, so if I did, feel free to cut this out. Um, but did I talk about, uh, Minecraft Streamer? Uh, the song that I did? I think you talked about it a little bit, but I don't quite remember. Yeah, um, I'll just say this again for posterity. So, it's, it is posted twice on my channel. Uh, one time is a live, uh recording uh with just like a short video of me playing the chorus which is at that point all i had um and then later i posted like a fully edited and like per- like you know arranged finished version of the song that was much longer and had much more song in it um and that version is kind of more like a commentary on like parasocial relationships um and all that. But that first one, that that first one, that like live recording one, a hundred percent based on Wilbur Smith. <laughs> okay, I might have to go give it a listen. I think it's one of the few songs that you actually didn't listen to before the podcast. That's fair, yeah. It's not one of my more popular ones, probably because it isn't directly Dream SMP related. But mm. like like I didn't I wanna clarify, I didn't have a crush on Wilbur Soot, but I had a <laughs> lot of uh I I placed a lot of value in the content he was making and the way he was doing it. Like I was very I was very awed by his ability to stay relevant through shifting trends. I I, I was very impressed by that. And uh <laughs> and also he was like pretty, so you know, don't at me. Um <laughs> And yeah, it was just like, like that was even before I had any hope or inkling towards doing any actual, like making content in the future. I don't know. I think that's just a fun, a fun bit of trivia that I, that I get to say that technically the first version of uh, of I'm in love with a Minecraft streamer is about Wilbur Set. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
and that's not lying to ourselves. You say like he 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 was pretty pretty. He's still pretty. God, man's oh, he's pretty. no, Very he pretty, he man. is not. St- he has not stopped being pretty. Oh, yeah. I want to Guy, clarify Guy's that. Guy's pretty. Like yeah yeah he's pretty. Uh, and he's I will pretty. say, uh, what was it? Big inspiration for me too. Guy's good. Yeah. I like his stuff. Good comedy. And uh, <laughs> I love that we have. Uh, in the chat right now, while while we're live streaming this, the Wilbur voice actor for uh, the Le- Le Van Brick musical, Sarah, they just said, <laughs> "You don't, I do." In response Man. to, I'm not like in love with Wilbur or anything. <laughs> That's fair though, man. <laughs> Who can blame you, man? The guy's got the guy's got a nice complexion. Dude, for real, the guy's got nice hair. He does have nice hair. His hair is so nice. Uh, Bro, I I love I love like fucking like longish curly hair. That ah uh, moi incredible mm-hmm. i might i honestly slightly considering trying uh curly hair at some point in my life do it, it looks man nice. i, <laughs> I think know. that per- personally i think that everyone looks better with long hair mm. that might be true honestly i, I really want to experiment with my hair a little bit i ought to try doing something i mean i mean co- college is the time that's true that's very very true actually might consider that might consider that but Sweet. uh Anyways, it's what's up MKJ asks. What MKJ, would you say? <laughs> what would you say is your common style when producing music? Like, what do you think is something you always have in your original songs? That's a good question. Yeah. Um. Well, first off, in terms of style, I once had a friend describe it as uh, techno pop. So I like that. So I'm gonna stick with that. Mm-hmm. Um. Something I always have in my original songs is I uh hmm. I I agree that there is like a like a style that kind of persists but I I'm not sure what how to define it. Um I kind of I kind of pride myself on the fact that if you took all the vocals out of my songs, they would still sound like complete songs. Like uh mm-hmm. they they each song does like at no point well very rarely is there ever just like chords and then singing over top of them of them Uh uh-huh i see like that that to me is like more demo stuff and it's fine if that's your style like fucking pop off i think it sounds great but i it's hard for me to make that work and so i always have like counter melodies playing and like uh different transitions that way um and so i think that that's kind of like i I guess that would be a common thread with my songs is that if you took all the vocals away all the lyrics it would still sound like a completed uh instrumental for like a i don't know for some kind of fucking geometry dash level or whatever (laughs) okay i see what you're saying though i see what you're saying that's kind of cool actually yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. All right, good stuff. Uh, all right, so I think we're about at the end of the podcast here. I think we've asked all we need to and gotten into everything that we should. Before we end this podcast, uh, and I have a few things to add on the end that I just want to talk about real quick, a few things that I've got in the works that I want to say and that I will have in the final version of this. Um, chill time. Oh, yeah, chill time. <laughs> But, um, Medio, just to end things off, what is, like, a final piece of advice to you, that you have to any and all artists or creators of any sort? Hmm. People aren't doing you a favor by, uh, consuming whatever content you're making. Don't think that you have to apologize and beg for people to see what you're doing because it's not like they're like it really isn't they're not doing you a favor you're providing them with something that you see in the world and that is not something that you have to apologize for okay good stuff <laughs> that, thank you that's good great way to end this off all right before we end this uh hate to hold you hostage here media but i'm just going to talk about a few things that i think oh, of course yeah i think the a few things that i'm working on that i think the people here that uh would be in type of audience for this podcast might be interested in so yeah, i'll do I'll, I'll i'll say i'll say like 
oh, that's cool every so often, like like hype man style, so that you get that moderately mediocre endorsement. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So uh, one thing I've been... Okay, actually, let me say this because it's related to the Create Stuff podcast. One thing I've kind of like been talking about like on the podcast i feel like i've mentioned it a few times but i've never actually done it just because you know i've been so like moving to college has just been a crazy transition um one thing i've been planning to do for a while and will be doing very soon is doing episodes like kind of extra episodes of the podcast where i literally take like uh, get a bunch of guests into one call and we all play minecraft and just talk about like art we like and stuff like content that we like and other stuff like that crazy (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> crazy indeed <laughs> um pretty pog champion if i do say so myself and one that uh i'm planning to do soon enough given that the people are available is uh i this is not like a guarantee by the way just an example like what i want to do for these is have people who do some sort of like kind of similarish content in the same one or like who have some relation to each other in some way so first one i want to do is going to be like you know the lamanberg the musical episode where i have uh ian you uh medio and public spam account if they're up for it uh, no guarantee that any of these people will be up for it for all i know media could be media could be listening to this right now i'd be like Ugh, i don't i don't want to spend another moment with this man but you know oh god that's kind of uh, a lot of looking no i do. just I, I yeah i mean i was trying to hide it i just kind of <laughs> hate your guts totally oh uh, uh, dang i guess i always say that at the end dang yeah i mean it's nothing personal i think it's just you <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing personal. I think it's just you, isn't that? I think it's just you. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, anyways, <laughs> you know, you you get used to that. But yeah, that's gonna be a thing I'm gonna start doing. Um, and I will also be uploading those as episodes of the podcast. I like won't have any Minecraft sounds on it. You know, I'll just have my music, the the sound turned all the way off. And you'll kind of see that as like, uh, I I don't know what I'm actually gonna call it yet. It'll be like create stuff extra or something like that. Uh, like. And that'll be a thing. You know, you can, you'll, you'll see that. It'll, and obviously, I'm going to be streaming it because that's just what I do. And I'll, those will probably be, like, completely unedited. Um, and we'll also have, like, video footage associated with them if you watch the YouTube version. But they will also be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So, yeah, that's a thing. Coming soon. I'm going to start organizing that. Uh, yeah, I also want to do, like, I'm planning on having some more video essayists on at some point because I really like video essayists. And I, I have, like, a... I feel like there are so many different things you can do with that. So I want to do one with, like, Professor Viral and a few other people who are video essayists after I've interviewed a few more. I definitely want to do one with, like, the musical ghost and some other people related to music, possibly also Medio. Uh, I want to get at least one more on the channel. I have some other people I've invited related to music that uh, we'll see if they say yes. And, you know, I, I think you guys need more idea. music homies. Oh, yeah, we, we do need more music homies. I've invited a lot. I I, 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 uh, I try not to say who I'm go- who I've invited just in case, like, you know, they don't respond to me or they don't, or they say no, which is, you know, what happens 90% of the time. Like, I think I've sent, oh, I think I've sent like good, a good 20 or so emails to people asking them if they want to be on the podcast and I've gotten one response. Uh, and don't it's been like a email. very long time. DM people on Twitter and shit. It works uh, way better. <laughs> people do not respond to Twitter DMs. Dude, that, listen, that's how we Twitter got, DMs. that's how we have 90% of our, our, our artists and musicians who have a following. Really? Yeah, Twitter and Instagram. DM people. It's, it's, it does you wonders. Dang. Okay, maybe I ought to start using Twitter and Instagram. I didn't actually know that, but I, I, will, I will keep that in mind. I'm, I'll, I'll start doing that. But uh, I will say, Discord, always what works best. Like, that, however, very rarely one that still works. I can't believe, like, I honestly can't believe the musical ghost even had his Discord DMs open. But if he didn't, I don't think I would have had him on the podcast. Uh, would have been able to get him on the podcast, I should say. Would have obviously still tried. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyways. So, other thing. I've been doing, uh, I'm going to start, now that I'm, like, in college, and I have a lot of work to do, but I... Like, and I know a lot of other people in this chat right now have a lot of work to do, even if it's, like, for stuff, like, for the musical or anything. I'm going to start doing more productivity streams, as I'm calling them, where I literally just put on the stream. I put on nice music in the background, like, nice ambient noise and music. And uh, I, I put on, I make the visuals look a little nice, and I literally just study on camera. And that's it. The entire point of the stream is that we just get, like, in the same place, and we all just work on stuff together in the same environment. Uh, and I feel like, especially if you're listening to this and you are, like, a person who does stuff, 
you know, or like, you know, create stuff, you're probably gonna have some uh, work to do. No. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you should come watch. Come, like, just come hang out. I, I honestly think the atmosphere is nice. I'm really trying to build a good atmosphere, and I really would love it if some of you guys would come check it out and tell me what you think of it. You can, if you go to my Discord server and join it, you can get a role called Productive that'll make it so that every time I do it, uh, I will at you, and you can come join. So, yeah, planning on doing that a lot more. Would really love to see you guys there and hear your feedback on it, how you, what you think about it. And I also might turn it into, like, a psychology experiment of some sort, because I'm a psych major. Uh, yeah. Yeah, get, get marks for it. Yeah, definitely. But, um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. Medio, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, before we end Thanks this, for having me. where can people find you? Oh, yes. You can find me on YouTube at Moderately Mediocre. Uh, there's another channel called Moderately Mediocre, but I have more subscribers, so you'll, <laughs> you'll know. Um, <laughs> YouTube.com slash Moderately Mediocre. I think I have that link, because I didn't think I did, and then someone sent it once, and it worked, so I think I have that link. Um, okay, well, a link to their channel will also be in the description, of course, right at the top. Wonderful. Yes, click on that. Click on that crazy little link. Um, I'm always... Uh, open on Instagram if you want to DM me. Uh, my DMs are open on Discord. I would love to talk to talk, talk to y'all. I also got a song commission, which I didn't realize was a thing you could do, but I did, and that was great. A song so, like, commission. If you want to commission me for a song, I will like fucking let's let's get it going. Let's hook it up, baby. It'll be great. You Cute. want the, you want the you want that moderately mediocre stink on your songs? Okay, I, I know that we're, like, at the at the point of the podcast where I'm not supposed to keep asking questions, but what do you mean a song commission? I'm a little bit curious. Well, it was, um, this person, uh, contacted me, and they were, uh, on Instagram, I think, but then we moved to Discord later, and they were like, hey, um, I really like your, uh, your songs, I, I, I subscribe to you on YouTube, um, I have a story i'm writing and i have some original care uh, i have some original characters and i would like it if you could make a song for this one character and they sent me like a like a fan wiki they made and they sent me some context and i came up with some lyrics and i i you know cleared the lyrics with them and then i made them a song essentially very cool didn't know that was a thing but that's that's very neat yeah, I mean, I didn't know either. I'm, I'm glad that someone was brave enough to reach out to me for it because I would never have considered it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Would you ever turn that into like a, a thing, um, that like you would advertise yourself doing, like art, like artists do for art commissions? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I think that once the musical, I think that once we get our chapter one out, I might uh consider uh some more of that because that honestly very good experience and uh it was a, it was a fucking it was a pretty good like all in all seems like something that uh will be uh pretty good for me in the future and also <laughs> anyone who wants that from me in the future mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah for sure all right well uh i think with that we're gonna go ahead and end the podcast here Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you, Medio, for joining me today. Always a pleasure. And I will see you guys on the next episode with Public Spam Account. If, uh, if you're watching this after it's been uploaded and there's, a, you know, it's not past Saturday, uh, Saturday, 6 p.m., come watch. Uh, thank you guys all so much for coming. If you're watching live in chat, if you're not watching live, remember, I stream these live, twitch.tv slash Sean Saxon. You can come join chat and ask questions yourself. And you get to see all the stuff I cut out, which is honestly a lot. But if you uh, really want to see all the stuff I cut out, you can also go watch the uh, unedited version on my Patreon if you join for just $1 a month. But uh, if you also <laughs> subscribe to me on Twitch, since you're still giving me money, if you just do that and then you DM me saying you want it, I will just send it to you. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, that I, I can't really connect them any other way, but you're still giving me money, so it's just it's the same difference. Yeah, you should. You, you, that should be one of your subscriber perks. Very true. I don't... I, I, Alright, can I even, like, set subscriber perks anyways? Anywhere? I think you'll figure it out. Yeah. Y anyways, if you're listening to this, yeah, that's a thing. If you're subscribed to me, you can you can get it, if you want that for some reason. I don't know, it's a <laughs> buy, probably. Uh, but anyways, yeah. 
uh yeah thank Wonderful. you all so much for listening it was very good to see you all uh i hope i see you guys in the next one and yeah yeah peace out bye friends love you bye everybody love you all Hey, thanks for watching to the end of episode 6. Remember, I stream these live at twitch.tv slash seansaxman. You can be notified when I announce my guests, when I'm interviewing them, and you can join an awesome community by joining my Discord in the description. Thank you so much to all of my Twitch subscribers, uh, Al Awai, Sammy, Tonkatsu, Riptide, and Grant, as well as my Patreon subscribers, Tonkatsu and Sammy. Again! Thank you all so much for your support. Your support gives me the capability to improve this podcast and make it accessible to more people on more platforms. If you'd like to support me, a link to my Patreon is in the description. Even $1 a month is a huge help, so please consider pledging if you can. You get some cool benefits too. Alternatively, you can sub to me on Twitch. If you want any of the benefits from Patreon and you're subbed on my Twitch instead of Patreon, DM me and I'll send you whatever you want. You're still giving me money, so why not? And if you can't give me money, I completely understand. Just you watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing the video helps me so much more than a dollar a month, honestly. Finally, all links to stuff mentioned in this podcast are in the description. Please comment and let me know if I missed anything. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe so more people see this. Share it with your friends, and I'll see you all in episode 7.